Greetings Internet, Ken from the Computer Clan here, and today I'm going to talk about why I ditched Canon. I know, after years of using them for video, I finally ditched them. But why? Well first, I just want to say I do not hate Canon, of course, I mean, I still like the brand, and heck, my current DSLR, my 7D Mark II, I still use it for photography. I just don't use it for video anymore. Yes, it's a slightly older model, and it's lacking some basic features that I need, but it also seems like even newer DSLRs from Canon seem to lack features that I would like. I know there's other brands of DSLRs out there, like the GH5, that looks pretty good, but I kind of just wanted to ditch the DSLR form factor as a whole, and I'm replacing that new void with a Blackmagic Ursa Mini. Let's take a look at the Blackmagic and the 5D Mark III pitted against each other. We'll start off with this 70mm shot using the Canon EOS 5D Mark III. Notice the quality of the picture isn't that bad, but there actually is a lot of detail being lost, and this will become more evident once we compare it to the Blackmagic footage right now. Notice how there's a lot more latitude with our exposure. The blacks aren't too black and the whites aren't too white. There's no overexposure or underexposure occurring, and overall the picture is a lot sharper. Another thing you might notice is that the Blackmagic footage looks more cropped. This is due to the Super 35 sensor. While it's still great, it won't capture as wide of a shot as a full frame sensor, like on the 5D. Now let's take a look at the same black magic footage again, but this time color graded. Note that we're able to have a lot of fun with the color and push and pull highlights and shadows and other aspects without being destructive. The detail isn't lost. But speaking of detail, I think one of my favorite features or aspects is how much detail the sensor can pick up when it comes to sharpness. Overall, the picture is a lot sharper and there's a lot less fringing going around small details. If we blow up the image, you'll notice there's a lot more fringing in the DSLR captured frames as opposed to the Blackmagic frames. Let's take a look at another example. Note that when we're filming the sky and the trees, there's a lot of crushed blacks and we're losing a lot of detail. And when we compensate by trying to adjust the exposure, the overall image now looks too hot. We are overexposing. But as we switch to the black magic footage, we'll notice again, those 12 stops of dynamic range really kick in. There's no clipping, there's no crushed blacks, underexposure, overexposure. The image is perfectly exposed and the details are nice and sharp. And where it gets more fun is with the color grading. Again, with those 12 stops of dynamic range, we have a lot of flexibility in post. Plus, we're shooting with 10-bit color in ProRes 422, so there's lots of color data there for us to mess with without being destructive. Let's take a look at the fringing again. Notice the fringing on the DSLR footage. We're getting a lot of black splotchiness and we're losing a lot of fine details. This results in the image being rather soft. With the black magic, however, we have those details preserved, and that helps with the sharpness of the picture, leading to a great, high-quality image. Just for fun, I wanted to take my 7D Mark II and switch to the CineStyle picture style, which kind of simulates higher dynamic range, but it does this through software. So with that look applied, I just wanted to compare that to the black magic, and I think the difference is quite clear. Here's some more comparisons of how we can have fun and be creative with the color grading of Blackmagic footage, even in different types of lighting environments. Note that even in dark environments like this interior, we're able to bring details back from those darker areas. And personally, I thought a great way to detail the sharpness that this camera can pick up is by filming animals. Note that the fur detail is really fine, really crisp, and all of that beautiful sharpness is preserved to really give you a sense of the texture. Alright, now let's talk about something where the black magic really shines, chroma keying. So here is some Canon footage of a green screen. It wasn't a properly lit green screen, it was actually a white psych wall that was lit with green lighting. So it wasn't the most controlled experiment, but it still will get our point across. 
And when we switch to the black magic footage, we'll notice the green actually is much more smooth, flat, and consistent thanks to the dynamic range. Let's throw the keyer with the default settings onto the Canon footage. You'll notice we get a lot of crap left over, and one reason is because of the dynamic range not being as high, but the other big reason is because we're losing a lot of color data. Since the Canon shoots in 420, we lose a lot of detail around the edges of subjects, which makes it harder to remove the green color. That's why we get that gray fringing around the edge of the subject. But when we throw the keyer onto the black magic footage, even without making a single refinement, the key is already 10 times cleaner because we have that extra color data to work with. Less compression means that the effect has more to work with and it can erase the green better. Now, to anyone who has ever chroma keyed, they know that chroma keying around hair can be a pain. But again, since we're shooting ProRes 444, there is no chroma subsampling and pixels being blended together. This makes chroma keying around small details, like hair, a lot easier. Let's take a look at some more low light scenarios. For these scenes, we're only lighting them with a single Generate LED panel. Note that the noise is very minimal, yet the sharpness of the details still remains present and the overall quality is very crisp. The native ISO of the Blackmagic Ursa Mini 4K is 400. If you start cranking up to 800, you're going to start noticing some more visual noise, as seen here. Even though DaVinci Resolve has noise removal tools, I still recommend trying to stay away from ISO 800 if possible. And as you can see, when we start grading a bit, the noise is even more visible. But again, if you have a properly lit scene and you could shoot at the optimum of 400, or maybe even 200 if you want richer colors and less overexposure, you'll be good to go. But I typically stay away from 800. The last big topic I want to cover is the global shutter. So if we take a look at this footage shot on a Canon DSLR, you'll notice that with the quick motion, we're getting a bit of a jello effect. This is because these cameras use a rolling shutter, and there's other higher end cameras that are even more expensive that still use a rolling shutter. However, with the Blackmagic Ursa Mini, it uses a global shutter. So with flashes, there's no tearing, and with fast movement, there's no jello effect. It's all perfectly smooth. When it comes to features of the Ursa Mini, I'm blown away every time. I do wish the screen rotated 180 degrees, but there's other features that make up for it. Like internal RAW recording, that's a huge plus. The built-in XLR, a nice user interface with other great features like zebras and focus assist, and the build quality is just beautiful. Overall, this is the best camera I've ever had in my hands. So that's what I have to show with the Black Magic and the 5D Mark III. Feel free to leave any comments or questions or even suggestions down below. And again, check the description for more. I have some additional resources there that will let you look at the image quality comparisons in much higher quality than over a compressed YouTube video. I really like this Black Magic and I think it's really setting the stage for great future productions from the Computer Clan. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the not too distant future.